Hello, Devton. Uh, first of all, if anyone does not uh, want to be photographed, I'm going to take two pictures. That's for my mom. She never believes that anyone comes and hear me talking. That says a lot about her trust issues, but yeah. So, hello everyone, and welcome to my talk Behind Enemy Lines, Engaging and Disrupting Ransomware Web Panels. This talk uh, is PG-17, due to two reasons. First, uh, there are going to be some notions about drugs and bad words from uh, people in the talk. And secondly, I love saying fuck and shit, and I'm not going to stop it. Hello all, as you can see, I'm Vagel Stikas. I'm the CTO and co-founder of a penetration testing firm called Atropos. We specialize in API penetration testing and uh, green uh, PV and electronic vehicle chargers penetration testing. My research interest for the past decade is uh, API security and for the past couple of years, malware and ransomware situs. How everything started. So I don't know who of you were here last DEF CON, but I did uh, a pretty similar talk about malware situs, which was really, really easy. So I wanted a bigger challenge, and uh, the main question in here is, could it be any harder? Marcus Hutchins, I think you all know who he is, said that uh, cyber threat intelligence is such a wild industry. In contrast to the actual uh, intelligence, which is uh, a monopoly of the governments, uh, there is uh, the CTI, uh, there is just some random dude named Brad who got really baked uh, one night and yolled his way into a major APT's backend server. Two issues in here. I'm going to start with the one that has uh, legal implications. Who the fuck named his own Brad? It's, uh, I'm not Brad, I'm Vagelis. And secondly, I don't take drugs. I do like my occasional alcohol, but I also have th uh, three really strange people in the Signal chat. Uh, if you want to drop them a follow on Twitter, Twitter, not X, fuck Elon Musk. Uh, first is Solfer, my really good friend and uh, pretty much partner in all my research and the main person to blame. Uh, my second uh, person is Iskuri, who is a legendary uh, DEF CON, multiple times DEF CON and Black Hat speaker, and uh, a person who hacks bootloaders for fun. And third one is No Thanks. He is a super ninja uh, hacker, multiple times uh, DEF CON speaker too, and uh, a really good artist. So all three of them were trying to poke me around to start uh, going after ransomware. A couple of minutes ago, I asked uh, how much difficult would it be, how much more difficult it would be. For the malwares, uh, in the past uh, couple of years, I have been able to pwn or gain access to pretty much 50% uh, of uh, all the panels uh, that I have seen. So it's 18 out of uh, 36. For the ransomware, it's quite difficult, so I only was able to get access to three and a half out of 140 that I have tested. Quick intro. That's the only intro. Ransomware is a type of malicious software that threatens to publish or block access until the blah, blah, blah. If you don't know what the ransomware is, go somewhere else. How ransomware tanks work? They're step-by-step process. One is uh, they somehow get uh, uh, access with uh, and distribute their malware uh, and infect an internal uh, user. The second step, uh, step is getting access to command and control C2s 
then they do the discovery and lateral movement, the data extraction, so they're extracting all the data, data encryption, uh, which means you have lost all your data, and then there is extortion, so what we're going to see there are three or four ways of extortion, and then there is resolution, however you, resolute, uh, you resolve that issue. Okay. Uh, that slide is going to seem like I'm pitching you on how good ransomware market is. I'm not. I fucking hate them. They fucking hate me. But I want to say some good stuff about them. So it's the fastest growing type of cybercrime. Their payout uh, broke uh, the limit of 1 billion uh, last year. They hit 1.1 billion. It's a highly professional industry. It seems that the boundaries uh, here uh, falling, are falling off, so they're after uh, hospitals, critical national infrastructure, and pretty much everything else. And WannaCry opened the kind of worms that uh, we cannot uh, close. Again, this slide too, I fucking hate them. The gangs are highly hierarchical. We expect that it's a criminal uh, rig. They have a clear structure. They, the first part is obviously the tech part that we're going to see later on, but they also have ransomware negotiators and customer support, as pretty much any company has. Money launderers and payment processing, because they are, as we saw, they are processing by 1.1 billion per year. And collaboration and partnerships, because why not partner with a ransomware, right? The tech part. Yeah, they have several uh, specific and special uh, users. One is the malware developers. I'm not going to explain what it is. Exploitation developers who are possibly developing either zero day or end day. They have special people for data theft and leaks. They have people for operational security. And last but not least, and uh, usually we don't know about that, they have really good people on infrastructure and hosting. And that makes sense because imagine owning a, a, a unicorn company, uh, extracting uh, half a terabyte of data and not being able to process it because your infrastructure or hosting was bad enough. Let's move to the ransomware models. Uh, first of all, there were lone wolves. At some point right now, they are no longer uh, it. Those were single people who were doing everything. Initial access brokers are a special way of ransomware groups. There are people who specialize in just that initial access, getting it and then selling it to other ransomware groups. Only one ransomware groups, which is from start to finish, everything uh, done by them. And ransomware as a service, which uh, you could consider it as uh, software as a service, or as I like to say, it ransomware meet capitalism. How ransomware as a service are being paid? Flat monthly fee, affiliate programs with a monthly percent of the profits, one-time license. This is not as a service, just saying, but they do or, or, uh, advertise that. Pure profit sharing, payments made to the, uh, to the RAS and then they give you a part of, they give their affiliate, not me, a part of uh, the profits. And the most well-known were Lockbit, Black Cat, Clop, and some more. This is my only try of being uh, a graphic uh, designer. You see I'm not good. So we are going after the C2 server. As we can see, there is the user, there is the cloud, and there is the hacker slash ransomware on the top with the red. Can anyone guess why he is the hacker? No one? He's wearing a hoodie, guys. If you wear a hoodie, you're a hacker. You should know that. You're DEF CON for fuck's sake. Uh, the extortion, how they do. They establish communications with victims with multiple uh, ways. Talks, telegram, email, or some internal web panels. Keep that in mind. We're going to see one. Uh, they lay their terms, and then they extort victims in multiple ways. There are four ways of, extract, uh, of extorting people. The first is ransom data, so they have encrypted their data, so they're wanting <coughs> uh, to, uh, the money to decrypt data. This uh, was easily uh, fell over because 
now pretty much everyone have a proper backup uh, system, I hope. Uh, then the second part, where the second level of extortion was releasing data to the public. So extorting the people that we have your data, we're going to release it on the public. The third was DDoS uh, with knowledge obtained from data. And fourth was uh, communicate with people that were the victims, customers, or even the LEA. The, we have seen the, in 2024 a lot of uh, uh, groups going uh, to the LEA and saying that this company was hacked and they did not report it. So let's set some goals. First, uh, we want to identify all the C2s and data link sites. Try to find any vulnerabilities, and I mean any vulnerabilities. Identify any people behind them. Try to disrupt panels and threat actors. And the three last ones are really, really important. Do not disrupt with uh, any active LEA investigation. Don't be a malakas, and don't get vanned. So those two, uh, uh, the last, are my motto for the past couple of years. I have them as stickers. If you want them, come ask uh, for them. So uh, the past couple of years, I have been joking around that I will be vanned, which was mostly a joke and the tongue in the cheek uh, thing. But right now, I'm trying to disrupt uh, criminal rigs that handle more or less the tens of uh, uh, of million of dollars and they are criminal rigs so this is no longer a joke but an act a, an actual probable uh, risk for me so this uh, last night when someone tried to enter my room by wrong i literally thought that i was getting fund this is not funny a more probable situation, though, is me waking up again with this uh, message. I don't know how many of you have uh, woken up with this kind of message, either on your Google account or your uh, iPhone. Uh, but when you wake up and you see that government-backed attackers may be trying to steal your password, you are freaked out. So. I'm going to say it here in DEF CON. I also said it on Black Hat a couple of days ago. If anyone wants to burn his one million zero day to get access to my email or my phone, I'm going to delete the photos from my kids and give him my phone for just 100k plus VAT. <laughs> There's no, no reason to burn your zero day for me. I want to state again that uh, I had really low expectations into finding anything and I didn't find as much as I would want. How did I identify panels? Those really nice people that are doing CTI, I'm not a CTI expert, I'm just a random guy who Googles and uh, doom scrolls on Twitter. So I used Ransom Lookio. Ransom Wave, ransomware.live, the, the deep dark CTI on GitHub, and lots, and I mean lots of doom scrolling and monitoring CTI companies for new posts. The research had certain limitations that we knew, I knew from the beginning. The C2s had a terribly small lifetime because they were live only during uh, the actual uh, phase of being uh, of the ponads and they're also really difficult to find because all the CTIs companies will keep them for themselves obviously and not gonna post an active uh, uh, threat. The data link sites are well very very well looked after and they're also behind Tor and Onion so it gives uh, it uh, gives an extra obstacle that I would have to bypass in order to get to them and test them. My methodology is quite uh, straightforward. I'm going to ignore malware distribution and the reversing. First, because I'm a singleton and I don't understand reversing. This is mostly because I'm, as I said, a singleton and uh, two, because I hate assembly due to my college years and a certain person who tried to teach me. 
uh, I would just run the malware in a sandbox, extract all the URLs, and use data leak URLs found via CTI or other means. And then I will introduce you to a new a newer Toyota Corolla. The Toyota Corolla of uh, security testing, also known as web application penetration testing, <laughs> will get you from place A to place B. It's not sexy, it's not nice, but by getting you from A to B, it will probably also give you some info about ransomware groups and potentially a couple of RCs. Methodology, uh, boring stuff, but I have to say because of those tools literally made the whole research. Uh, Deer search for the win, FFUF, verb suit, the trifecta of Tor, which is Tor Expert Bundle, Tor Browser, and Tor Socks, which greatly helps to run any other tool. Coffee, and I mean a lot of coffee. Any run for running all the malwares, several droplets on DigitalOcean, because as I said, they had a lot of operation security, so I was getting banned en masse. Uh, so done I.O. and census so that you could potentially find uh, websites outside of Tor. And uh, did I mention coffee? I mean, lots of coffee. How I'm going to approach the whole thing? Black box web application testing. Use any acquired information for furthering my attacks. Interact with data leaks and chat websites. Intentionally infect sandbox so that I could get a ticket. And by ticket, I mean that we are going to see later that all the chats wanted a ticket so that they can identify what company you were in. My first step was, as I did with malware, just blatantly run uh, Deer Search and FFUF with a custom word list through Torsox. My results were disappointing. There were only 15 URLs that gave something interesting, which is not exactly interesting. Then I moved to manually check all of them. Five of them were WordPress. A couple of them were leaking IP addresses, and some of them were cheeky. And when I say cheeky, I mean really cheeky. So one of them told me to fuck off. The other one told me to use the N-word. I'm not going to use it because I respect people. And the cheeky was Abyss, who said, just business, nothing personal. Keep that. So let's go. Uh, much like uh, Alice in Wonderland, let's uh, take uh, the little uh, dumb bunny by hand and let's move inside the ransomware land, shall we? First one is Malox. I don't know who is familiar with that. They're also known as Target Company, Fargo, and Ton, Ton something, I cannot pronounce it. First appearance was of June 2021. They target mostly Windows machines and specifically MS SQL uh, servers. They brute force SA accounts. Last year, they started using also some end days, and they are uh, in the hundreds of victims. This is uh, their index page of uh, their data leaks. As you can see, they have a lot of victims. And the slash malloc slash private sign in, uh, they requested a private key so that we could, I could chat with them. So I had to, as I said, uh, infect uh, something. I infected uh, any run. I got uh, a key. Is it clear? I said, hello. Guy didn't respond, so like I uh, said again, hello, nothing back, sorry. I then decided to run Deer Search and FFUF. There was an Apache server status page exposed, which was leaking URLs, server IP addresses, and it was also leaking tokens to check other people's messages. But that was not fun enough. So can you see the whole thing? There is a button neck underneath my hello that says reply. This is the post message. It's practically a quote. Can anyone guess what the issue is in here? No? Okay. So 
There was an either on reply ID parameter, which means I could quote pretty much any message in the world. In, not in the world, in the server. The parameter was an incremental integer, so all I had to do was to take that post, write a Python script really badly, and write uh, and do a for loop from one to, I don't know, 50 million, and export all the messages. That was also uh, used for in-between mess for in-organization uh, messages. So first there is the boss, clearly uh, a god complex. I work according to my own schedule, which does not change on anyone's request. As soon as I see the payment, I will send the, the cryptor. I have a well-maintained business, blah, blah. By any, it will not be disturbed by any moron that could not secure their machines. Oh, the irony, right? And last one, I was on special K for a couple of days, so fuck off and do the work that I'm paying you to do. I don't know exactly what special K is, but I think it's a drag. So, M. Luis, boss, the budget for this client is only 15K. Do you agree? They don't need much data. And Jessica, probably to another employee. Boss is not in a good mood today. Let's be careful. Yeah, be careful. Good for you, Jessica. <laughs> and last, but really not least, the boss was sending the decryptors to the guys. Here's the decryptor for company A. Here's the decryptor for company B. I got those decryptors because I wanted them to. Uh, th this is the actual organization. Uh, I said I wouldn't have another graphic, but I needed to do another graphic. You should forgive me for that. So boss on the top, Panda, Jessica, Malox, and Ismail on the bottom. And then after a day or so, unfortunately, my chat was disabled and my eye door was fixed. Message was not delivered. Unfortunately, I couldn't, I couldn't quote it anymore. What did I get? I got internal knowledge of the team. I got pretty much all of their messages. I got some decryptors which I communicated to the companies that were ransomed with and they used it. Once uh, the admin got up, or sober, I don't know what, it was fixed. So all in all, result, um, mediocre, I guess. Sorry about that, but I was too verbose, I was uh, too blatant, I just did it all at once, but I wanted to, to do it. That's my second uh, group. I think all of you know, you know it, Black Hat and Alpha V. Uh, they're also known as Noberus. Their first appearance was in 2021. They operated as a ransomware as a service. They have a Rust-based malware and server-side C2, and they use the triple extrusion scheme. The rest loader that we're going to go after uh, was researched by Lapuseanu, sorry if I butchered your name, Andre, uh, by Bitdefender Labs. It was targeting only Mac. It was developed in Rust. Mm, I think all of the Black Hat uh, malware was developed in Rust, and their C2 was used uh, on all of Black Hat malware. Andre Lapuseanu, that's uh, the actual uh, research that I saw while doom scrolling, and there were one, two, three, four CNC servers in there. I checked all the C2 URLs. One of them was online, but it was just returning 404. So me being me, I have decided to put it in the loop of constantly, of continuous scanning that I have in my rig. And two days later, it downloaded some documentation. The first documentation was uh, for clients, so I could see all the malware, all the malware infected clients. And the second one was tasks, so I could see all the tasks that were ever run on uh, the server, or on the machines. Unfortunately, both of those endpoints were offline at that point. So what I had to do is read the documentation uh, try to guess, not exactly guess, try to understand the documentation, create a, a Python script, automate the check and put that in the loop again and wait. And by wait, I mean really wait. I think seven or eight uh, days after, 
I got a push notification on my phone. Yay, you got something. So I extracted 197 commands in two minutes on a four hour window. What does that say to us? It means that the Black Cat was putting the C2 server only when using it and exploiting it. And when they're not uh, using it to do any movement, any lateral movement or anything else, they were uh, putting it off. And uh, you can see that in here it uploads a file. And this is the scary command. When you see the XXX in here was a company's name. So when you see zipping someone's AWS and GCP uh, environments on an env.zip and then being uploaded uh, to another server, it means that someone is getting exploited as we speak right now. So I had to switch to incident response mode. I hate incident response. <coughs> I identified four companies. All of them were cryptocurrency related. Crypto is cryptography. Fuck cryptocurrency. Two of them were unicorns, which means they were mm, they, their valuation was over a billion. Uh, all of them, all four of them, were notified and they acknowledged the issue. None of them were announced. What did I got? I got all the info and understood the lateral movement that Black Hat was doing at that point. I stopped the whole campaign. Four companies were not ransomed and Black Hat got a really big financial hit. And after... <laughs> Thanks. And after a month, under increasing federal scrutiny, Black Hat ransomware gang pulls exits come on its way out. I'm not going to say that this was all me, but I'm going to say that uh, my exploitation and stopping that uh, campaign probably helped them to do that exit, the decision to do that exit scam. So all in all, I would say not bad, right? Third one, Everest. Oh, my lovely Everest. Active since late 2020. They targeted high profile targets for the, uh, for the first three years. On the last year, they moved to also lower the profile targets. They pivoted to initial access broker. They pivoted to just data leak. Fuck, they, they pivot around like they're startups. They graded as highly sophisticated by multiple researchers. And they're also well known for being paid and not getting uh, and then releasing the data. So they're mentally unstable. Right? Why don't won't you go after a mentally unstable millionaire? This is their data leak page. Does it look like something you know? No one? It's fucking WordPress. Version 5.5.3. This version was done on 2020. That's four years uh, ago. There on the left, there is the login page. And on the right, there is also the readme txt in case you didn't know how to install WordPress. Then I run uh, WP scan via Torsox because why not, right? It said uh, it's really insecure, 42 vulnerabilities identified. Unfortunately, none of them was really exploitable by silly me. The only thing that uh, I could see in here was uh, that error on uh, RSS uh, functions. Uh, as you can see in here, we can see that the PHP error reporting was on. It was a Windows machine and we were running a Vertigo server hosting, which is end of life for the past two years. They also had the Deer, uh, open Deer, so you could see pretty much everything. They had a couple of zip files, but nothing interesting. They also had PHP my admin. Why not, right? And I did what every super hacker does in the world. I Googled Vertigo default MySQL password. Uh, 
Yeah, I got that, but unfortunately, it didn't work. And that was my talk up until 15th of July. Then, my nine-year-old son, okay, let me stop. Uh, in Greece, I have two sons. The one is nine-year-old, the other just became 13. So can we all say happy birthday to Antonis? Because, thanks for that. Happy birthday, Antonis. I should be here, there in Greece, but I'm here, so you know me. So, uh, my nine-year-old was uh, sitting at my computer reading my 2000 uh, open tabs. And at some point, he says, that's a really strange name to call your server. Why the fuck would you call it Vertrigo? I'm like, no, it's not Vertrigo, it's Vertigo. He says, no, I know how to read. It has two R's, it's Vertrigo. I'm like, what, motherfucker? Like, <laughs> he then said that he's not the thing, I'm the thing, but yeah, it is what it is. And do you all know what that means? I have to reuse my favorite meme. I use Vertrigo, and what that means is... I'm the fucking admin. WordPress administration. I did develop a, a WordPress plugin. No, I didn't play, uh, develop a WordPress plugin, sorry. I took a PHP cell, pony cell, zipped it, named it cell.plugin, Upload it there and and I think I might have prematurely used the I'm the admin meme because right now I'm the fucking admin in the whole uh, situation. <laughs> then after doing things that uh, most of the red teamers in here, I see a really good red teamer in here, would decapitate me of doing, but again, I'm a simpleton, sorry about that. I ra somehow ran Mimikads, got the whole, I don't know, token and shit and all that, which means the Russians who the fuck would expect them to be Russians? It's a Windows 2012 uh, server, and uh, they have done a lot of crimes, but can anyone guess what's their biggest crime? They haven't paid for WinRAR. <laughs> for fuck's sake, you make, I don't know, 20 million per year, pay the fucking WinRAR. So, database export, username extract, remote command and execution on the server, got hold of their own secret keys, lots, and I mean lots of logs uh, to analyze. I was hoping that it would be down by someone by now, but it's still there, so if anyone wants to play, go play. Result? Again, this was supposedly my talk up until this Saturday. But this Saturday, Black Angels, it emerged in May 2022, high profile targets, Babook based, that means that they just uh, stole the whole leak of Babook and they are using it. They are focused on Linux and ESXi and they received a record 75 million ransom as we all saw last week. And then, Rakesh Krishnan, I hope I said it correctly, found their clear text, their uh, open web uh, IP, which means I had to take a look. This was on Saturday morning and I was flying away Saturday evening, so I had six hours. You can go there right now. I should make it a demo, but I don't like demos. So, they have a different HTTPS and HTTP configuration. The HTTPS is on the slash public uh, of uh, their symphony. The HTTP, port 80, 
is uh, on the root of symphony, which means if you go to .env, you are going to see .env, and you are going to see app secret and the, and the MySQL password. You do what you want with that information. What did I find? env file exposure, internal URLs exposure, some error logs exposed. I'm not going to say what those error logs uh, were. You can uh, look at it. One mention, uh, one message mentioning for 5.5 million payment exposed. This was nowhere to be found, so I guess they were paid and killed the whole uh, thing. So all in all, yeah, that was fast. I could do some stuff with App Secret, but unfortunately I had to fly here, so you should excuse me for that. And we are getting to the end. My favorite part of ethical dilemmas. Uh, are we the buddies? What the fuck we are doing with our lives? I never wanted to become a vigilante. I'm not seeing myself as a vigilante or someone who wanted to do bad things. I always wanted to be considered, as we Greeks say, the Socratic fly or the God fly. I wanted to be the one that uh, reinvents the status quo and tries to make the bad people, the ransomware gangs, give them a taste of their own medicine. And I also want to say to CTI companies that they would really need to be more uh, open into sharing information. Only if I only had C2's information uh, more quicker, I would have a really bigger uh, talk right now. Except the, the two CTI's companies that have already used my research without mentioning me, those can go fuck off, I don't care. Conclusions. Some of us fail and fail miserably. Some of you really succeed and succeed gloriously. And I, I'm really happy with everyone that succeeds. I know that for the past two years, I have been looking, I really love VX Underground and their five horsemen uh, uh, paradigm. So for the past two years, from London 2022 with Spower, with Defcon last year with Stiller and Botnet, and this year's Defcon and Black Hat with Ransomware. I have been fighting all those five horsemen, and while uh, I never had a clear win, I could never say that this was not a case that I didn't look anyone, all of them in the eye, and smiled. So, thank you. And if anyone has any questions, I have, we have like five, five minutes uh, to talk. Here's the microphone. No one? Nice. Thank you, guys. Oh, I have one. Where is he? Oh, nice. Hi. Thank you. Great talk. My question is, which would you choose to fight? Five duck-sized horses or... Oh, I got it wrong. I got no question. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, guys. <laughs>